and it's 11 o'clock welcome everyone thank you for coming to spelling for life today we are going to look at the letter y today is the second last day of my pajamas that you've never seen before so today i have my peter alexander christmas gym jams on um it's a it's a night shirt as you can see there you go there's one more outfit that you haven't seen left and um, i will wear that tomorrow and then i don't know maybe i'll just wear normal per person clothes or i might repeat who knows but um but there you go those are my gym jams for today our special guest animal today is nala the staffy she's sitting under my desk chewing a toy that she stole which is a bit sad but never mind um she might jump up at some point today is thor's day the thunder god and that's why we call today thursday because it's named after thor as you know words change over time and thor changed to thurs in thursday so today thursday it used to be thursday all right let's get on with it let's get on with it i'm going to share my screen hoping that you can all see the PowerPoint. There's a camera on. Um, and we are going to do our presentation. Dun, dun, dun. Now, spelling for life, how to be a spelling star. Today, we are looking at the letter Y. Now, I know I've started sharing my screen, but I do want to show you this just on my board here. And that is this cloud here that contains the letter Y. As an introduction, we've got consonants at the top, vowels in a line down this way, and the letter Y is counted as a consonant when it's at the beginning of words, but as soon as it's anywhere else in a word, it takes on the properties of a vowel. It crosses the vowel consonant barrier and becomes a vowel, and it represents the sounds E, I, and I in words so it can represent the sound e it and i when it's elsewhere in a word when it's not at the beginning so that's what we're going to look at today we're going to look at why we even use the letter y why can't we just stick with e and i and we're going to also look at a word list that you haven't seen before so if you have been in the letter y lesson the original content here is coming up shortly so this little cloud here has that relationship between y and e and i and you see this cropping up a lot if any of you came to the letters c and g and how they can also represent s and j e i and y are the three letters that affect them all right so back to our sharing i'm going to write this word uh, no, I'm not going to share just yet. I'm going to write this word up on the board. And it is the word lazy. L A Z. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to write an E. Does that say lazy? No, of course it doesn't. That doesn't say lazy. It says lays because E at the end of a word doesn't make a sound. But the E is making the A say its name. So that would be lays. We use E at the end of words for a different purpose, not to make a sound, but to provide a signal to stop us from having illegal letters at the end of words and also to affect letters that are near them. So we can't use E, we have to use the stunt double, the letter that comes in where the other letters cannot be. And that is why. That is why lazy is spelt that way. It's the same with the word baby. If you put an E, on the end of the word baby, bay, b, what you've got there is babe, because e 
doesn't represent a sound at the end of English words. So we have to bring in that letter that then helps us to represent the sound E, baby, like that. So those are your first two words. Here we go. Just sharing my screen with you again, hoping that you can see that. And our first entry, when E cannot be there, you write Y. Same with, so we don't write lays, and we don't usually write lazy with a double E. It's actually less common to represent the E sound at the end of a word with a double E. There is a family of words that have double E at the end, like toffee and coffee and so on. Can you think of any others? Write them in the chat if you've thought of some words that end with double E. Much smaller family than the family that ends with Y. Also, we don't tend to write EY. That's two letters to represent one sound. And there's something that you should know about English spelling. It's actually quite economical. When I say economical, I mean, it doesn't like spending letters if it doesn't have to. Yep, English spelling is actually, we like to take shortcuts. And so if you can get away with writing one letter, you should try that first. You're gonna be right more of the time if you try one letter instead of two letters. So if you've got an E sound at the end of a word, try Y first, see if it looks right, look it up. But your, your best bet is the smallest amount of letters, not the largest amount of letters. It's the same with IE, that's two letters that represent the sound E. And they, they are all real spellings of the E sound at the end of a word, but you've got to use the KISS principle. Do you know what the KISS principle is? Keep it simple, students, right? That's the KISS principle. And the KISS principle means if you can do one letter, choose one letter, not two. All right, same with baby. Your job, more examples of when E cannot be there. Now let's look at when I cannot be there. I'm going to write the word my. But as you know, I'm going to do it wrong. I'm going to make a mistake and I want you to correct me and I want you to think about why this needs correcting. So here I go, I'm going to write my. Mm I. What's wrong with that? What is wrong with that? Oh, we've got some great examples of double E words, B and three and so on. And what you should know is if it's a one syllable word, you're going to have to use, um, in a lot of cases, two letters. We've got he, we, um, and me with one letter, but um, usually it's uh, multi-syllable words, you're gonna use a Y. No I at the end, said Tanya's device, if it is Tanya or someone else. That's right, you can't have I at the end of words. I is an illegal letter. You can't do it. Very, very well done, Melissa. Good work. You need Y, you need Y, Julia. You're absolutely right. In comes the stunt double, the letter Y, because you cannot use I at the end of a word. And so Y's job is to replace that. Easy peasy. So back to the Prezzo. Now we've got my lazy and baby and my and fly as well. You can't use an I there. The last column is called Greek I. The Greek, the ancient Greek civilization uh, existed about 2000 years ago in a place in Europe called Greece. And they were really, really good thinkers. Those guys, gave us lots and lots of words for some pretty high concepts, you know? They thought about art and they thought about thinking and they thought about medicine and they brought all of these words into our language, the ancient Greeks. And when we've borrowed words from Greek, the I or I sound in those words is usually represented by a Y and that's why I call it Greek I. Yep, so here's some examples of Greek I words. 
coming up. Examples of Greek I words would be gym, physical. The I in physical, the, in the first syllable, the strong syllable, is represented with the Y. Have you noticed, though, that there is an I in physical as well? The strong syllable in Greek words, when you've got I or I, is usually represented with a Y. So when you see Y in words, now I want you to try and figure out what it's doing there. Why have we got Y there? The rule is, when you cannot use the letter E or I, use Y. There are also a whole bunch of Greek words, Greek derived words, where we use Y instead of I. All right. Somebody said, my surname ends with E-Y. <coughs> How come? Well, as you know, if you've done any of the um, lessons previously, names often don't follow the rules. They don't do what we expect them to do because they enter our language in a different way from the other words. So that's one answer. But also there is an E-Y family and you should know about the E-Y family. There is a bunch of words that ends with E-Y. Some common ones are money, honey, monkey, donkey. And look at monkey and donkey, exactly the same in every way except the first letter. And yet the pronunciation is different. This is what I mean about sometimes words, um, the sounds within words change over time, but the spelling doesn't change as fast. So monkey and donkey should say monkey and donkey or monkey and donkey, right? But they don't. Anyway, that's an example of EY at the end of a word. We've got valley and we've also got chimney. Here's your homework. When you see a word with Y in it, not at the beginning, so I don't mean words like yes and yellow and yacht, not words that start with Y. Anywhere else in the word, look out for Ys, okay? When you see a word with a Y in it, Write it in your list and mark what it's doing. What's it doing? Is it replacing E? Is it replacing I? Is it the Greek version? What you need to do though is not include a vowel plus Y. That's a different thing. So I, when I say a vowel plus Y, I mean these digraphs to letter A that you may use at the end of a word. EY, which can represent E or A in words, OI, OY, and you've got the letters U and Y together in words like guy, he's a nice guy, and buy, I'm going to buy some pizza. Yep. So don't include those. Vowel plus Y is a different thing. And it's a thing that we're going to learn about next week, but it's called a vowel digraph. So don't include digraphs. It's vowels. Sorry, it's the letter Y with a consonant before it, but not a vowel before it. I do hope that makes some sense. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of resources that I think you might dig because we've been doing quite a lot of word finding and word lists and that sort of thing. And I want to show you um, a, a website now that some of you may or may not have heard of. And the website, are you keeping an eye on the messages just in case there's anything coming up that we should know about? Um, and the website is called Spellphabet. And Spellphabet is run by the magnificent Alison Clark, who is a speech pathologist in Melbourne. And she has put together all of these different spelling lists. And the one I'm showing you today is E as in Turkey. That's the EY that we were talking about before. And Alison has listed these common words and some not so common, like lamprey. Does anyone know what a lamprey is? It's a really, really scary looking eel. Um, so there's some brilliant vocabulary in there, but I wanted to show you this not just because it's got an EY section, but also if you click on spelling lists, you can get, she's put together these huge lists of words. So 
for instance, if you wanted to look at um, A, the letter A, as in last, so L-A-S-T, the A saying ah, you can look up this list of words that has all the words that have A representing ah. Do you see how that works? So you can look it up by sound, you can look it up by spelling. It's a great resource for doing your homework and finding new words. But there's another thing that you've got to remember. If you are finding words for homework and you're putting them in your lists, make sure you know what they mean. You've got to look up that meaning. There's no point in having any word on your list that you don't know the meaning of because you might as well just have words in French or Italian, right? If you're putting a word in your list, you've got to know the meaning and you have to take responsibility for that because I can't check all of that, but never ever put meaningless words in your list. You won't remember them and then you've wasted your time. So that gives you lots of good um, vocabulary development as well. All right, that was a fairly short lesson. Oh, somebody wrote Lynn. You're right, Ozzy. Lynn does have a Y in there as well. There are some words that are derived from Welsh, which is what Lynn is derived from, that also use a Y. Welsh is one of the languages spoken um, in the United Kingdom from Wales. Um, it's a name, so it doesn't matter. Yes, exactly. All right, guess what? It's time to put your hands up. And um, yes, Caitlin Lilly, are we going to talk about the exceptions from yesterday? Well, have you got some? I would really, really, really like to see those ones. If you have got some exceptions from yesterday, write them in the chat or put your hand up and we will unmute you. And yes, I can show you the homework again. Um, just before I take the first question, I'm just going to show the homework for um, for Julia. Also, the homework will be on the website as soon as I catch up. See, I need a producer. I need someone to do this after work for me. Who, who, who could it be? <laughs> yes, homework. When you see the word, see a word with Y in it, not at the beginning, write it in your list. Don't include vowel plus Y. That's a different thing. We're coming to it next week. A Y, E Y, O Y, and U Y. I and Y don't go together. Um, oh, sorry, <laughs> that's the homework. Um, and like I say, I'll, I'll put that on my website as a matter of course, although I have a student in half an hour. Um, okay, so I'll stop sharing and we will take some questions. What is the name of the dictionary you can use to find out how many, ah, Kate, yes, how many words end with a certain sound? It's called? morewords.com. I have just put that into the chat. morewords.com. Do you want a little demo of morewords.com? Because it's so excellent. I'm going to do that. Let's do this, right? Because I want you using this resource. It's an amazing resource. Okay. So morewords.com. What I do is I enter my search terms. So words ending with EY, I search for that with Google first. And it gives me a whole bunch of um, websites, but the one I like to go to is more words. And there's a way to sort it within more words, but I go this way for specific reasons. Um, you can do whatever you wish, but, and here it is. So this is morewords.com and it lists all the words ending with EY. And it tells you how many words there are, 255 in the English language that end with EY. It sorts them per length, so three letter words, four letter words, five letter words, and so on. But you can also click and you can list them in order of how common they are instead. So it's an absolutely amazing resource. Then it lists them alphabetically like that. So really, really superb, superb resource. Thank you for asking. I hope that helps. Um, all right. Now, A like in day. Yes. All right. So, Melissa, uh, you're up. Shall I do the eye eating or are you going to do it? <laughs> I think Nala has a question too. All right. Go for it, Melissa. How come accents can affect, affect speech? 
can accents affect speech or are you saying accents can affect speech how how can accents affect speech got it okay so every accent has something in it called a vowel system and that's the look that's the store of vowel sounds that you use right so you might say a e i o a but another accent might have those vowels as different yep they might say them slightly different differently sorry and that's one of the chief things that that determines your accent you can tell somebody's accent just from the way they use vowels consonants are a bit the same we don't really have a lot of variation between consonants in accents but vowels very much so mm -hmm. so you know how you say the word grass you know the green grass that that grows in your on your lawn how do you grass. say grass 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 so you go ah i don't because i'm scottish i go ah so that's one way <laughs> that what i say doesn't necessarily match what i spell or what you say doesn't match what you spell which is why we have to standardize spelling because everybody's vowel system is different does that does that answer your question yeah oh good i'm very glad Thanks, all right it's a brilliant question clever people um all right We've got an ED question. No, we've got Grace and Oh, we've got Grace. Sorry, Grace, you're up. Uh, hey, um, Grace I, sorry. Yesterday, um, I found out um why pretty was um yeah, it's old English. There you go. And you know, it's funny, Grace. I actually looked that up as well, and it goes back to a Dutch word which is spelt with an e, pretty. Um, and we kept the spelling, but we started to say e instead of e. But Old English, your you're brilliant research. Thank you very much. You're I welcome. That. Did you hear that, everyone? Pretty is an Old English word. And those old words, they don't do what we expect them to do. Well done, Grace. That was, it's Grace, right? Not Hannah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well done, Grace. That was brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, looked like. Do we have an ED question? Um, I think we have an ED question. ED and Amelia, go for it. Um, we were just we were just wondering why words like um we were just wondering like words like king, which is spelled K I N G, is spelled K Y N G. Is there any reason to that? Because king is is Germanic. It comes from König, um, uh, and so it's not Greek. <laughs> come up. Come here. It's not Greek, so um, it, <laughs> there, there would be no reason for it to be spelt with the Y. Although there are some people back before spelling was standardized who like to use Y everywhere instead of I. Um, but um, the, the printer said, no, no, unless it's Greek, don't use Y, or unless it's replacing E or I at the end of a word, don't use, don't use Y. So that, that's how it all came about. Does that answer your question? Very good, lovely to hear from you as usual. All right, do we have any more um, any more questions? Anything else in chat that I've missed in? Uh, doesn't look like me. Okay, say hello to everyone. <laughs> All right, well, gosh, that was a pretty short lesson, wasn't oh, it? Well, we've got oh, a question from Ozzy. From Ozzy? All right, Ozzy, go for it. What's your question? Um, what, what? Breed of dog is thin. Well, I call him a labradingo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but but we don't know because he was a rescue. So we don't know who his parents were. He came to us when he was two years old. But some people do say that no dogs very well. And some people who have a dog that's similar to him say that he is a border collie crossed with a Kelpie. And his ears would definitely um, give us lots of clues about his kelpiness but who knows who knows what else as you can see though nala she is a staffy and she likes to just sort of stand on you as you can see here i've got one thing to show everybody else i've got one thing to show you before we go here's another um thing that i wanted to release today and that is it's coming up i'm going to share my screen with you because i'm going to put it onto my website 
as well. And this actually helps you to tick off your progress as you go along in the Spelling for Life program, because you've actually reached the end of the first unit of Spelling for Life. There are four units and you have just completed unit one. And that's called Spelling Starter Level One. So I'm gonna show you the, um, the downloadable the downloadable form, can you, it's really hard doing this one-handed, Nala. Yeah, you, you, it's really hard doing this one-handed. Yes, it, it really is. Um, anyway, I'm going to share that with you now and it will be on your, it'll be on the website and you can download and print it if you like. Uh, but there it is, it's Introduction to Level 1 Spelling Starter. So it's Level 1 is complete when you've done the following lessons. So if you've done the difference between vowels and consonants, what consonants say, and that's C and G and Q, illegal letters, the single vowels and the letter Y, that means you have actually finished Level 1 and you have left the area of Spelling Starter. The next area is Spelling Technician. We're going to do the Spelling Technician lessons next week. All right. Uh, we have another question. Another question? In chat. Yep. Um, we just wondered, though, so is there a, a specific pattern for the exceptions? Is there a specific pattern for the exceptions? Um, we just wondered, though, is there a specific pattern for the exceptions? The exceptions to, are we, to, are we talking about why now, Caitlin Lilly? Is that what we're talking about? Or exceptions to all words? I'm not sure, can you be, can you clarify your question? King, Finn, Queen, Nala. <laughs> Are you able to do that? Next week's lessons do start at 11 o'clock or, or we can unmute your mic. Like other. Still not mm -hmm. sure what you may. Yes, unmute your mic and then we can talk. Um, so that would be Caitlin Lilly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I got it. <laughs> we, oh, we put on our wall behind us all your list, and we wrote started writing exceptions. And I know you said try to find some, and you'll see a pattern. So, for example, ah, uh, we had mother, brother. Then we found another, and we were just like, <laughs> we just wondered if there's a pattern we're not seeing well i know for another for example or r like bar and look grandma closer, look, look closer to the letter in other brother another mother um shove love above the sound straight after the uh is v or v ah oh you see <laughs> but in money honey month monk and son What's the sound after the uh this time? Man. Oh, no. Yeah. Mm. And in come and come, what's the sound after the uh? So, oh, mm. Yeah, and that's the pattern. Oh, thank you, because we've been struggling with that. We keep writing uh, so right. that really helps. Thank Me, you. I keep falling. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. And uh, there's a parcel winging its way to New Zealand as we speak, by the way. Ah, yay! Yeah. <laughs> so it's only little, but it's fun anyway. All right, everybody. Next week's lessons will be at 11 o'clock. So I've decided to keep it with that time. Um, they will be at 11 and they will be recorded and they'll, they'll get up onto the website as soon as possible. She's really heavy. She's falling asleep. She's falling asleep on my, on my knee. Um, it's it's actually the v rather than the uh sound. Ethan and, and Lily or Liliana. Oh, I wrote your name as Lily. Um, all right, everyone, you know what time it is? Yeah, it's time to say goodbye. We are going to unmute your mic in three, two, one. Bye, bye. bye everyone. Bye. 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 Good day. Bye. Nice background, Noah. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. See you tomorrow.